nice base color. Um, with the, my monomer, this color powder here it will just be like very buttery as you can see. Uh, if you can't, you can just watch it. So, you know, I just move it just when I need it. Um, the way Joe's actually revamped a lot of their colors, it's very good. I'm gonna tap down the cuticle at this area a little bit. I don't want it too thick right there because I'm using my pink. I'm using my stiletto um, tips right now, my, my clear stiletto tips, um, and I clip them down. So you see how it kind of has a little bit more uh, of a, a, a pointed edge here. So I'm gonna wait for the powder to dry a little bit so I can sculpt it and get it more coffin. That's one of the things about using stiletto tips that um, I don't like when it comes to coffin. That's why I have my, my I do have my full coffin uh, non-secret tips, which are already coffin. With the stiletto tips, the longer it is, when you clip it at the tip area, it's gonna be a little bit more, it's not gonna be as boxy because it kind of curves in like a stiletto at a point. So you gotta really, really wait for your powder to dry so then you can sculpt it and make it more boxy like this. As you guys notice, like, I, I kind of sculpt it out here compared to if you were just go by this, it'd be a little bit more pointed here at the tip area and you wouldn't want that. Um, it wouldn't give you that coffin look. So that's the one of the downfalls, but like I said, if you do use uh, some little tips to make coffin and you go around this medium length right here, medium long, you won't have a problem. But if you're trying to, you're trying to get the maximum length out of it, you'll run into that issue. Hey Jolene, how are you? Definitely the best monomer, thank you so much. So that's how, you see how, see how it's like pointed right there? What I'm gonna do is while I'm pulling the powder down, I'm gonna wait until the powder is more dry. And then once I get out there, I'll be able to, to um, uh, sculpt it. If you wait for the powder to, it's too wet, it's just gonna take on the shape and it won't look like a coffin, it'll look like kind of like a ballerina. And that's one of the, I think that's one of the issues a lot of nail techs are running into. That's why they're the coffins that come out coffin because they're using stiletto tips. And they're not realizing that the stiletto tips aren't really ideal if you're doing the maximum length. Shorter length, yes, you'll be fine, but maximum length, you might run into an issue with that. Okay, so you see how as I'm sculpting it out, pulling the powder down, I'm, it gets more dry out here because I'm giving it more time. And at that point, I'm just gonna flatten the middle here and then I'm gonna use my brush to kind of sculpt in how much coffin I wanted. And I'll take in a more coffin shape instead of uh, a pointed shape. You gotta be very careful, remember, because it has to be more dry for you to do this. If it's wet, then it's gonna happen, right? You see how the difference in that looks now? Ah, so a lot of you guys that are running the issue, that's probably why your coffin is coming out a little bit more sharp or, or, or um, kind of like um, ballerina at the tip where it comes in a little bit. It's because of the tips. I do have the non C curve coffin tips that are already coffined out, so even at this length, so you don't have to worry about that as much, okay? So I'm putting the base color on first. I like to do the, all the base color first before I do the, the, the secondary color because I want to see where my um, base color is so I can gauge where my ombre is going to be. I don't want to do it because I don't want to keep putting the pink on as I go because I won't know where I started my, my, my ombre. I want my ombre to be nice and precise so since they're going to come down the same amount of pink on each nail. So my monomer this really works really well as long as you get the right ratio. The powder is really nice and buttery. And, it generally works with every powder. I haven't ran into any issues with anybody using with another powder that they, they didn't know. But I generally use it with like all the mainstream uh, big powders like chisel, wig gel, not polish. Um, even, you know, it works with uh, Young Nails, Valentino, all that stuff too. But there's a lot of new acrylic out there now on the market. So, um, you see that? I gotta be careful right here. And this is from, this is from Wave Gel Simplicity Collection. The new collection, the powder is completely different. I'm always, Wade Jobs always like working on their powder. See, I'm gonna keep this here. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna get that nice edge here. They're always working and making their powder better and better. So it, it's been gradually bad. I like it. I like their Simplicity collection. A lot of fun colors. Both these colors from the Simplicity collection, this pink and this blue. I'm gonna bring out the powder here. Kind of sculpt it out. See that? Give myself a sculpt. It's almost like uh, working with forms, kind of. <laughs> but that's what you gotta do. That's what a lot, a lot, a lot of nail techs miss out on this when they're using long uh, stilettos for coffin. And they run into that issue. Hello, Stella, how are you? Ooh, oops, there's someone in there. Get my brush. Yes, yeah, see, look at the shape of this, this tip right now, right? And watch when I finish. The shape of the tips can be completely different. You don't know why. So we do have class announcements coming up. Um, I posted all the advanced design classes. Um, we decided to revisit some some big cities that we did our beginner classes last year to 
give the, our students uh, an opportunity to take an advanced design class two two day workshop for just designs only. This is for not even. I think even beginners will like this because I think like as a beginner you really can't say that you can't do designs. I've seen a lot of beginners do really good designs. I mean, if you're a nail tech and you want to really step your game up and get more more coverage with your work. As in like people like designs. People like to see designs. They interact more with nail tech with, with fancy designs. And we're teaching trendy designs, also new designs, and we're showing guys new products. And we take student requests also during the whole class. I mean, it's two days of constant designs to learn a lot. New tricks and tips on how to do designs and how to incorporate into your work. That will give yourself a little bit more exposure when you post it because, like I said, people interact with like with designs. You know, it's just one of those things that social media has given us. Like, everybody wants to see designs, everybody wants to see how to look, you know, on long nails. So, um, it gives those students the opportunity to learn these new designs here, especially with the, all these, you know, Easter and Valentine's Day coming up and all that stuff. There's a lot of designs I can show you guys for that. So Atlanta, New Jersey, Denver, and California are the four, the four locations we've decided on. Tino, Gina, and I. Uh, I'll be going live with Tino probably sometime next week or maybe this weekend. We're going to talk about, you know, the reports. So Atlanta classes in February. It's going to be the closest one for those guys in the Atlanta area. Take advantage of that. Um, reasonably priced, and also you get a great experience. And you can learn more than just designs in these classes. We kind of even go through like a little bit of social media work with you guys. Um, me, especially, I'm trying to figure out how to do like a mentorship, online mentorship program thing like that, but I'll figure it out. So, we've gotten all the colors on, so we know as you can see, let me show you this color. This color is W71. Um, we, I kind of place my blue all generally the same spot here. That's where I know how to gauge where my pink is going to be, how much pink I want to put up also, because I don't want to do too much. So, so I want my nails to be consistent. Jersey, yes, Jersey is closer. So this, for a lot of you guys have taken my classes where it's one day acrylic, one day design. This is two day designs. So it's pretty fun. Cause you know, I realize in designs there's so much I can, more I can teach you just run out of time. <laughs> so now I know where to gauge my pink, to apply my pink. I'm doing a two bead method in class. I teach a three bead method for those that are, ooh, this, this part is a little bit runny. Remember, I'm not still gonna go through this with a little bit of a clear later on, on a little bit of clear later on to um, uh, actually uh, seal it up just with ombre is so I don't drill into it. So I'm not too worried about the thickness. I'm just gonna make sure my ombre is nice and smooth. Because once I put the clear on, no going back on that. I think Cherry Hill, New Jersey, I believe. We don't have the location yet. I, I kind of want to just do these classes at hotels since we're not working with monomer. So use a hotel event room or something like that. So I know this is gonna be running, so I'm gonna give it a little bit more time on my brush. Remember earlier, it just it just started running. Um, so I'm gonna apply. Remember, you don't have to do this too thick. You just want to make sure you get the blend, okay? Because we have to use our clear to seal in. If I were, if I have any thickness issues, I'll go back through with the clear later. Okay. pink blends really well with this blue. Um, it's just a nice cotton candy look if you, if you notice. These pictures of this, this, this ombre specifically, if you take a picture in a low lighting, um, like a dark lighting, it actually comes out really, really nice. I 
I'm probably gonna post a picture of that, like that later. In a low lighted situation. Um, blue and pink is definitely one of the very popular. It's early January, but this is pretty much what you're gonna be seeing a lot of in spring. It's after February, mid February, early February, you're gonna be seeing a lot of ombres. Multicolor ombres, spring ombres, you know, follow the trend a little bit. Um, you can notice ombre is gonna be very big in the spring. So make sure you have all your cover powders, cover pinks for your ombres, and you know, your pastels. Pastels are important. Pastel, multicolor pastel neon ombres. So I'm doing this in a two-day method. It's, very, it's a little bit hard because I gotta gauge my time and control. Um, for my students, I teach them how to do it in three, and then they work their way to two. It's very important that I work on the steps, and I don't expect my students to do what I do. It takes time. Just a little bit bits and pieces here that I want to just fill in. It's fine. No, it's perfect. Not even me. Um, this is this is the area I'm gonna seal up all my clear powder later. Let me show you all the sides. Give this a few more seconds. Kick was important. I'm gonna make sure I nudge the cuticle area. You know, I haven't done live nails in a while, but like, I feel like a natural. Like, I feel like it's like, like riding a bike. I did this for like a year straight, like 10 lives a day, and now I just like feel like I'm getting back into it. And, like, I'm getting back to the flow. Even the way I'm talking right now is like completely different. Like, not different, but like, Maybe I'll open my books up, get some more lives in here for you guys. Maybe. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll open my books. Do maybe a few more clients a week. Maybe a few clients a week. I do a lot of information uh, content now, so. Plus, a lot of my lives are saved, so people will watch, be watching more ones all the time, so. So, you're pretty much done with the ombre at this point. He's got to get a little bit of clear, and I'll show you guys how I cap it. A lot of people cap the whole nail with clear. I don't think that's necessary. Um, it just makes it thicker. Um, yes, if you have any issues with thickness, like you need more apex in areas, utilize that clear for that purpose. Um, but other than that, I would recommend using the clear to seal in your ombre. Okay? Not to actually make up the structure of the nail. The structure of the nail should already be there. You know? See? Structure. It should already be there for your application and so on. So this pink is a 47. I'm just gonna grab myself some clear that I got from the nail supply store, nothing special. It's a big chunk of clear and you know a small bead just where the cute is where the where the ombre meets. You know, it's just right there. See? You know clear is very runny. So I gotta be careful, and I just kind of smooth it through the nail. This allows me to be able to drill and file and buff this nail without having a worry of messing up my ombre that I spent due diligent time building. So um, I see a lot of people just put the whole thing over the whole nail. You don't necessarily have to do that. I generally just place it where the apex areas just points are. That's where I, uh, I can utilize the powder more, and I just use my brush to just kind of brush it in. The majority of the powder is going to be right here, protecting where my ombre is. Just right there, see? Place the bead right there. Brush it in. Make sure you brush it in smoothly. You don't want to make any clumps and bumps. Makes more work for you later on the drill. I don't like doing a lot of drill work. I'm trying to like, I like my nails nice and smooth so I can just go in and have some finishing touches and get out. You don't want to spend too much time doing a set of nails. Generally, ombre, you can take, it can take you about 35, 40 minutes to do. Um, generally, that's like the mastery level because ombre is actually just about power control. The more control you have with the powder, the faster you can do it. I've seen people whip out nice, beautiful, I, I whip out beautiful ombre in like what, 20, 30 minutes sometimes. I'm not, I'm not living. It's, um, Leave it there. 
no brush. This is feather my finger through, make sure nothing is stuck in there. It's very important. Generally, you have a nice Kalinsky brush, it's gonna really nothing gonna be stuck in the brush. You can just take care of it. This brush is very old, probably over six months old. And for those guys that have the two piece brushes, remember that if you get monomer in this area, it's gonna break loose and it's gonna come apart. You just gotta glue it back together. No biggie. I got a lot of questions for that, that's fine. I'm saying it now. <laughs> there are two piece brushes. Okay. So, the application is complete. There you go. Um, I just want you guys to notice the consistency of the blend, as in from every finger here, how it's very consistent. That, this is ombre, okay? You can do ombre in any form, and if it's up and down, up and down, uneven, you know, you're not gonna be able to charge a lot of money for it. But if you can do an ombre where every finger is about the same blend, that's when you can get those $80, $90 ombre sets. Yeah, that's what they're paying for. They're paying for your technique. See how I, I place it? How the, the blend is just evenly on every nail. N not, no higher, no lower, okay? So I'm using 100 by 100, 100 grit filer. Do a quick shape. So I'm gonna go through and just kind of quickly shape. Oops, I put this one a little bit. No. Thank you. So now I'm just gonna go through and just quickly file and shape. Um, generally, this process this shouldn't take too long. If you're taking 20, 30 minutes shaping, I think you're over filing, just be careful, okay? Because you know, we do our shape with our our application because the, that's just very, very crispy, okay? You guys are just running by it. Apply some pressure to get that crisp shake, okay? Mmm, look at that. See? I love my 14 brush just ordered from you. My go to. Oh, thank you. Yeah, my brushes are pretty great. What kind of nitro gloves are these? Um, These are just black nitro gloves. I don't know what kind really. I can I really don't like these ones as much as uh, my other ones. I like the smoother ones. These ones kind of really attract a lot of um, dust. Kind of rubbery. I like ones with like, smooth surface. <clears throat> Love your brushes. Changed my nail game for life. Oh, thank you. Yes, my acrylic brush is definitely one of my top sellers. What clear did I use? Um, as I said, it's just a very, it's a very generic um, a nail supply store clear. I like to buy my clear in bulk. I'm not about to pay 15, 20 bucks for two ounces. <laughs> I would have paid 40 bucks for like 60 ounces. So clear, more or less, really the same as any clear. Um, it's just how you use it, really. I don't think there's anything in difference in the clear and the quality wise that's that noticeable. Um, once you put it on, it's just a clear. So that's just me spilling tea however you want to take it. Yeah, a lot of companies will tell you, oh, my, my clear is the best. This is the best clear. Yeah. They're all the same to me, personally. And then my recording stuff in you do a tutorial. My, your recording stuff in you do a tutorial. And that recording. Um, you probably have to buy at least a, a, a nice camera mount um, to set up your recording. And also, I have at least a nice phone or a camera phone that's good quality. A lot of it's lighting too. Actually, in my studio, the lighting's not ideal. I would like a little bit more warm lighting, to be honest. But I already have like a chandelier up with this white light, so I have to like switch out a lot of stuff. That's why I don't do it. But at home, or you have like a, a desk, uh, one of those ring lights. Natural lighting is actually very good for recording. It doesn't interfere with the, the, the lighting. So.
come on, like, guys, it took me about less than five minutes, and we have some nice crispy coffin shape. This came from my stiletto, yes. which are these, but I do have the, uh, these that are already coffin for you, and then see her. They're already coffin, so you don't have to do all that molding and stuff like that. They come in natural, so. When do your brushes be back in stock? Um, they should not be out of stock. I don't think any of my brushes are out of stock. Um, check, check. Um, I have to check with the team actually. Maybe with a certain size out of stock, but the brushes there should be in stock. If you have any issues, you can always DM the team at Nailed Studio page. You got an Archon holder, so you should be good. So the issue is probably maybe your camera or the lighting. And the background also, guys. Give yourself a nice matte and white background. I'm very not, I'm, I mean, I'm, I don't really have that much experience with like videos and visuals, so <laughs> maybe a little rough for me to help you with that, but you have to find the pay with the settings of your camera, lighting. This one, top, this one, this the top of the hips. This is gonna be ooh. You know, ombre is considered almost like a a, a basic technique now. Um, a couple years back, ombre is considered a design, but. Nowadays, we got so much new stuff that ombre is becoming kind of a standard, and that's why I, I actually was one, this is one of my favorite designs to do back then. Is in like not a lot of people did it, and I I mastered this ombre a while back, and I really pride myself in doing precise, beautiful ombre. And you know, I can count a handful of nail techs out there that can that has better ombre if not similar to mine. Um, it's all about controlling the powder technique, understanding the powder. Um, once you can do that, you can do black and white ombres, all those neon colors and reds and all that stuff that you want. So I see a lot of beginner nail techs into this industry. They want to do ombre right away, and they jump into they jump to like reds and blacks and neon colors. I'm like, no, 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 don't do that to yourself. You know, start with pink and whites. You know, like natural colors so that's not too dominant, easier for you to do, so you can practice, and master it. Then move up. You don't know how many times I get DMs back in the day saying, I can't do this ombre, and they send me a picture and it's like black and white. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> black and red, oh. I'm like, well, that's like, well, even I struggle doing that. And if you're just starting out, it's definitely gonna be hard for you. It's the process. Don't skip it. Don't skip the line. This is a 100 100 grit filer. Oh, thank you, Jenny. And the Nars. I'm, I'm probably killing your name. Hey, what's up, Leah? Miss you too. I just checked the sound of stock. What brushes are you using? Uh, acrylic brushes. There's none of my acrylic brushes. You got to stop. Oh, that's weird. Let me check the store. I'm using a size 16. Maybe a, a specific size that I have stock. I realize how much I miss doing lives. Maybe I should open my books back up and start doing more nails, huh? <laughs> yeah, I miss doing lives, guys. Nail lives. I mean, I still do Q and A's at night, so you catch me at 10 p.m. Eastern. I'll probably do one tonight. Uh, Q and A, questions and answering. So sometimes I do miss some questions here while I'm working, but so shaping took about 10 minutes or so. HD30. 
you're on the lowest setting in that. Yep. Okay. So, oh, 12 and 14 hours of that? Really? Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit of hand filing. Remember earlier how I used that clear? It should be very smooth. See that? The hand filing is... This just allows me to do it a little bit more quicker. From side to side. So the better your application, the less you have to do. See how smooth it is? Everything's all nice and scratched up. Uh, I'll use a buffer later on to remedy that. For the total wine, 1856. Almost the same as the Yep. It's there, it's the same same bottling company. It's just what it's like a white label. Yep, a little bit cheaper. $20 cheaper actually. 15. But Cayman is definitely the best. I crackled that bottle tonight. See, I'm not going into the cuticle area because I'm using my cuticle bit for that. I'm just doing the base of the nail, make sure it's nice and even. Um, right now, it just seems very easy because my application is very smooth. If your application is not as smooth, you're going to be feeling some resistance, but that's good. That means that you're actually smoothing it out, breaking it down. So, this should be very quick, also. You know? I mean, I can use a drill bit for this, but the drill bit won't be as the drill bit won't be able to cover the whole nail. So, I might leave indents here and there, but this gives me a flat surface area and I'm not staying in one spot either I'm moving in a circular motion so that it doesn't get caught up I can't wait to go back to Atlanta next month for the design class anyone you're out there in Atlanta Atlanta area I'm going to go to a two-day design workshop with me Tino and Vina make sure you hit up that DM don't miss out I always get this issue where I, get, I go to a state and then when I leave are you ever gonna come <laughs> Said, said state. I'm like, I was just there. Where were you? It's like playing a like, game of cat and mouse sometimes. Yes, yeah, yeah. Like, there's light spots here and there. That's where I know that I'm going to put my file there a little bit longer and I'll even it out more. And remember, we have that clear to protect our ombre. The reason why we use a hand filer is because the hand filer is actually less res less resistant so that you don't accidentally drill into too much of that, you know, clear. Ah, right? There we go. One hand done. And you try to file like that? Yeah, try it. Just hand filing technique. A little bit. It's easy. Nothing special. It's up and down motion, circular, moving circular from outside in. You know, I don't want to stay in one spot because I don't want to eat, use a flat surface and eat into a curvature of the nails. The structure of the nails is important. The, see my nails? I'll show you guys later. They're not flat. They're 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 like an arc. They're like a they have curvature. The structure means it's stronger. So clients don't break them, even at this length, unless there's some freak accident. The nail shall last. Hello, Stella. Do you think you'll hit Virginia again before I go? Yeah, you best definitely should go to the ATL one. I won't be back in Virginia anytime soon. The ATL one is the most, the closest one. Uh, like it's in date wise, it's coming up next month. Yeah, in a month. You want to know how to do nails? Uh, well, this is the first step. You're sitting here watching.
that easy. Just just put that up there, right? I think that's, this, I think this is the, the, the year that I just tell people, now it's not easy. <laughs> I think that's the one thing we forget sometimes when we, we're in this nail industry, that, how hard it is. Well, me anyway, because it's been a while since I've had any struggles, but I think nail techs enter this industry nowadays, they forget how hard it is. Because on social media, we try to, you know, make it seem like it's so easy. And I'm kind of guilty of that, because when I'm doing nails live, I'm showing you guys, I'm doing it like, you know, easier, very easily. And then you guys think, oh, that's simple, but it takes time to build up where I am at. And a lot of people have to realize that. Give yourself some time for growth. Give yourself some room to fail also. You're not gonna learn anything if you don't fail. Hey, what's up in the UK? When we come back to Dallas, I missed the last time. Oh no, Dallas. Maybe not until a while. Um, but, uh, I've announced my design classes with Tino and Vina, but after some, uh, half of those classes are filled, I'm gonna start announcing my uh, salon ready class with focus on acrylics and stuff and dip um, for the beginners. I, I still, don't worry, I'm not gonna stop doing those, okay? It just takes me a little bit more, I just gotta get these classes filled up first. All right, so we're now gonna seal in the cuticles with some cuticle work. I'll be using my fine 5-in-1 custom bit, one of my favorite bits. I'm going to go back through and seal in the cuticle areas, make sure they're flush. I remember earlier when I was doing the acrylics, I was flushing it anyway. This allows me an easier job because there's not a lot of excess for me to drill in. I don't have to worry about too much of the base of the nail because this should already be smooth, right? So I'm just gonna focus on this area here, the transition here. And remember, we have to clear here to protect this ombre, but that means doesn't mean that we have to go. We can go crazy. We can only go to a certain extent. Okay, just relax. This gets nice and flush. You gotta get that transition too. A lot of you guys just clean the cube up and you gotta leave it there. You have to make sure it slopes out so it doesn't look like it just bulges up, okay? Less clients it doesn't mean you're never gonna cut a client. Okay, things happen. Not the end of the world. Sanitize, sanitize, clean. Apologize. <laughs> sanitize, sanitize. Apologize. <laughs> you're only human. We're aired. As you can see, it's a lot less work for me. Now I have to go down the whole nail barrel. It's custom made the way it is. It smooths and removes. I know a lot of you guys have used bits like this where it's like super, super, super like gritty where it just eats into the acrylic. This one kind of smooths and removes. It doesn't really go in and eat the acrylic away like really quick and fast. So I had this one custom made the way the, the, the cut pattern on the bit is. And this bit is, I want to say, almost six to seven months old. And it still works just as fine because I'm not using a lot of it. Just for just this purpose. A lot of people use a bit on the whole nail, that's why it gets worn out faster. Uh, my classes are in person, so it's be tough for you, South Africa. I have people fly over from other countries sometimes, but I think that's a little bit out of the way. 
your definition is heart. <laughs> yeah, it is a heart. Thank you. It means you love love what you do. And the heart definition. Yeah. Let's get this cuticle area sloped out. This is important because this is where the lifts come from, guys. If you don't do this, the lifts, they'll lift you. They'll be like, they'll lift your nails. No, the, the nails will start lifting sooner, more. Um, nothing's perfect. Nails are supposed to lift. That's the wear and tear. Just like how, um, you know, your brakes get worn out. It's a wear and tear. Your tires get worn out. It doesn't mean that you're going to be slamming on your brakes all the time, okay? So we got to limit how much this wears and tears as much as we possibly can. Uh, generally about a month these will last and then um, about two weeks is when they'll start to lift and then they start to grow out and lift. Um, that's why my nail salon say two weeks to come in for a fill. Seven to 14 days. We don't know how fast people's nails grow. Some people's nails grow like twice the speed as other people. So we say seven to 14 days. That's a precaution. Sculpting out that blue. There's some excess under there. Get rid of that. Um, I generally recommend you switch it to a sanding band if you have to. If you have a lot of control over your drill bit, you can use the metal band. But I say switch to a sanding band in case you cut into something you just shouldn't cut into. More controllable. gems and for certain specific designs. There's a no wipe builder gel and that it drives the cures um and it's a non-cleanse. A lot of a lot of builder gels now. A lot of builder gels are, are still tacky, you need to top coat it or use alcohol. And the one I have for my jewelry glue is you don't need to do that. How fast should we find on Kugels? I, mean, I run about a 11 to 13 speed but I have a lot of control over my drill. I recommend you run about seven to nine slow it down a little bit so you have more control but I like working faster because I'm just in and out. I don't want to spend too much time around the cuticle area. It makes you more prone to uh, cut the client when you're sitting there playing around it. I like in and out. Quickly get in the cuticle area, flush it, and I'm gone. I think a tornado uh, no, this is a 5-in-1 bit. Tornado, I think it is smaller. It's a 5-in-1. I have this in a medium, which is really nice, too. It comes in sharp and safety. Yes, 
Yeah, I've been so busy. I haven't even checked with my team. My team should have told me this. What? It's not a time chair. I can't read why. Why are the nails so much? Why around the nails so much contact on the skin? Oh, this? This is the uh, acrylic residue from when I did the acrylic. I'm not actually contact on her skin, it's just right in between here. Trust me. Um, this is old cuticle. If I was making contact with her skin with this bit, I would be cutting her up real good. As you can see, I'm putting the bit right in between her skin. Right between her cuticle area. So that she's not really making contact with her skin right in between the channel there. Unless you wear acrylics, this is just how you, you do it. I'm not going to show you what happens when I run into on her skin because you know what's going to happen. <laughs> I just cut her, but yeah, yeah you got to get the point. So this will be right in between set. It removes all the excesses. Sometimes why I don't like trimming cuticles before I, I do acrylics. Some of that excess cuticle actually is like your buffer zone. You kind of remove that dry cuticle. If you were to remove it first and then you do this, you might open up or cut the client that way. That's why I kind of leave it. Unless it's like an excessive amount where it's going to be a big factor that when I drill, it's going to remove it. It's going to show like a big gap. Then I remove it beforehand. But generally not a lot of clients have that excessive skin there. How long my set? My set can go like months without lifting. I've seen clients go two, three months. Depending on the client too. Some clients are rougher on their nails. Some clients are. You know, I think it's when you when you have clients that wear long nails. A lot of them know how to wear long nails, so they understand. And then you get the clients that you know once in a while they wear long nails, so they don't they don't get they don't understand how to wear it. That's when you run. That's when you run into issues. Because then they don't know how to wear it and that's why they'll end up you know, So now I'm just gonna buff real nice. Real firm. Remember, we did some lot of hand filing. Um, generally, it doesn't really matter because we're putting this top coat on this. So that even if we leave some kind of uh, slight scratch marks, the top coat will take care of all that. But for the sake, just gonna buff really nice and fine. Uh, 100, 100, 180 buffer would be nice. I like 100, 180. 100, 180 grit buffer. That's, that's like the standard buffer. Um, if you get a buff that's too um, gritty, it also be not a good thing because it add more scratch marks than it removes. And then we're finished. Let's just add a top coat and be a nice kind of candy ombre. Blue and pink is definitely one of my favorite ombres to do. Go. So we're finished. Nice and clean. See how um, even the ombre is. This is a medium viscosity top coat. It's not runny, so it won't take away your shape at all. I have another bottle in the bag, 
somewhere. all you need, okay? You know how sometimes you guys polish top coat and it goes to the corner and it makes it all bulging out or bubbly? This won't do that. It's a medium thickness, so it just stays on one coat. Good curing. Dripping to one corner, no. Um, you long as you apply a thin coat, the viscosity of this top coat will keep it just one thin layer over the surface area to polish. See, then we go back over here. Everything is still the way it is. Shakes oh, 60 seconds. Let's do one hand first. Hey JT, how are you? It should be that blend, okay. Illegal products don't lift the size it should be on each month at a time. Because I already know the product you use. This is curious. Uh, here, I use this as wave gel. I use chisel. I use. <laughs> I think you must be a first time here. Um, all my products are sponsored, so um, I use my own, my own EMA monomer. All the ingredients are on here for you. I need to stop procrastinating on your top coat. <laughs> Consistency is one coat. Um, structure of the nails, all consistent. Damn! Squirt! Structure. It's flush to the cuticles, it won't lift. So, you guys, you guys see the consistency? This stretch. Okay, here. Yes, sir. For the one that was asking, and don't go crazy. She's probably her first time here, so it's okay to ask questions. I don't mind it at all, actually. Um, none of my products are illegal because I have a really big fan base, and I have I own my own salon and I own my own products. So I don't think me using illegal products live for thousands of people to watch is a smart idea. why you don't get any lifts okay just look in at the cuticle area look at the flushness how flush is the cuticle so when this grows out yes there's gonna be some minor lifts here and there but not excessive enough for it to fall off that's why if my clients are careful they don't have any issues with lifting so if she went a month two months it just grows out it has some minor lifting not enough to pop off Pretty. It's pretty. Um, earlier, guys, I, I was telling you guys about structure. My nails are not flat; they're structured. Them. That means that this nail, the, the nail itself, has the durability. 
properly place apex um, so that it won't break very clean that's the structure of the nail right there it's not flat see all right guys no you don't have to back me up it's okay a lot of people are new to the website the page though it's good it's a good question but I wouldn't say someone's using illegal products just because it lasts as long. That's kind of an unfair judgment. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you guys later. We're going to get on out of here. All right, thank you for joining me. A nice cotton, candy, cotton candy ombre here. Just look at the blend, how consistent that is. Got to be honest, I haven't done a set in what? Months. Come back to this. It's like riding a bike. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Appreciate all the shares.